Welcome to our panelists, people who have practically started to try to do this kind of thinking uh, in their companies and uh, in the investment portfolios in the case of, of Mike. But I guess I wanted to sort of get a, a sober reality view from each of you, um, starting with Luan Lea. How is adaptation seen within Eskom and what are the kinds of things that you're doing in response? Okay, thanks for inviting us yet again. Um, I must say that uh, over the years we've been able to build uh, that capacity within um, and I'll use this systems, within our systems, within our infrastructure and the assets uh, that we are managing as a company. So for us it's always been about, we've always looked at climate change as a risk to our infrastructure assets and our systems. So we have been able to built some level of capacity, but it has been a journey. And um, I don't know whether I should get into that on how we, our approach to all of this. Um, I think the first thing to highlight is that for us, the climate impact risk has, we focused a lot on our ability to adapt. So it will fall under what we call our risk and resilience system. So we've got a very extended um, uh, capability within the organization when it comes to risk and resilience as a company. And this looks at our operations. It also looks at from a tactical perspective and from a strategic perspective. Yeah. And uh, as an approach, what we started with, we started uh, very simple, simply by developing a policy developing a strategy and once we had a strategy we went uh, to that what we refer to as level one at level two we've gone to say how do we basically assist or support the different business areas or systems or infrastructure managers within the business to basically understand what they're vulnerable to how they're vulnerable to how how much they are vulnerable to the changing weather impacts or climate change in the long term and them understanding the thresholds. So for us, we, for, we spent about five years understanding what is it that we're vulnerable to? What are the weather variables? What are the long-term climate change um, variables and impacts that we have experienced in, from an infrastructure, from a systems perspective? So a lot of time was spent on understanding our vulnerability as a business and that talks to the thresholds what is it that we can withstand and we've learned a lot about um, rainfall something as simple as rainfall what is our infrastructure and system designed for um, extreme temperatures uh, what does that mean for our system because that talks to our plant efficiencies it talks to our maintenance as schedules it, ta it talks to our um, performance of, uh, of, of people within the business, basically. And um, also talks to simple things which you would be aware of, energy demand and supply. So our national control systems, it talks to those. So it, it, it's, it's, it's very strategic, it's very tactical, it's also very operational for us. So a lot of time was spent on understanding the vulnerabilities around that. And we, once we understood that, developing that vulnerability assessment framework, that's when we went outside and said, okay, who would assist us to understand this skill on weather? Even though we're a business, we've always used, we've always we used weather as a variable in our systems planning and management. We've gone outside our business and said, research institutions assist us to understand climate change. We understand weather, we've got even our own weather stations where we basically have been, you know, understanding, you know, getting information and data on that. And I must stress this, the, the difference between data and information. It's a big difference when it comes to our space. Uh, when people say, give us data, I always say them, we don't have data, we have information though, because those are two different things. So we've always had data from our weather station, so your historical and your current, that we're very good at, at, at collating that and in feeding that into the systems which we use to basically manage our systems. However, when it comes to climate change, that's when we've realized to, uh, on universities, we've worked very closely for the past eight years with the CSIR, where we had to learn, where our systems had to learn the language around climate change impacts. 
and they we relied on their data and we we specifically said to them we're not interested in your data but we we interested in your information which we're going to basically extrapolate for our systems and our infrastructure. So that's how we've worked with the CSIR in the past. And they've assisted us to basically taught us a lot about uh, the two degrees, the 1.5. They've taught us about the 8.5, the 4.5. And we had to decide as a business, what is it that we want to be adapting to or um, responding to? And we settled on 8.5 and all our scenarios were around that. And the information that they've given us in terms of climate change projections, uh, they're on 8.5 scenario. Um, Wait, what do you mean by 8.5? So the 8.5 scenario from a climate change perspective, that's when we do very little as the world in basically reducing climate change. So for us, that was the most realistic scenario that we found our infrastructure systems and People. And I think earlier on when Jill was presenting, he basically gave us that. And in the previous sessions that you've had, that has been confirming that the scenario that we chose as a business uh, is the relevant one. So you're basically planning for the six worst. degrees yeah. and above of Yes, increase. yes, yes. And the reason why we're able to do that is because we understand what we've designed for, what we're vulnerable to, what our thresholds are. If we didn't have those, if we didn't have that information, I don't think we'll be, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be managing, we'll be planning for a different scenario. But that for us, it was a, a long-term uh, strategic uh, decision that was made, that we know what we, we can adapt to, we know what we've designed for in terms of our infrastructure, we know what our, what our systems can withstand, what would be the worst scenario for that? So can you give us, give us an example of a, of a sort of system vulnerability and response? So for example, your plant efficiencies. We know that we, our systems for a, a, a thermal power plant, it can take, for example, in up to 35 degrees. But once you go to 38, 41, the performance of that system goes down immediately. So already we're already experiencing that. Uh, water, we are strategic water user uh, in areas and you will all know that most of our thermal power stations, we, we took a decision 10 years ago that, or even beyond before that, that we'll go for dry cooling. Even though it was not directly to climate change then, but we already knew what our infrastructure and our, what our thresholds could withstand back then. And looking into the future, what would that mean? So already, Tem simple things like temperature, simple things like um, uh, the number of fire days that we have. We know our transmission lines, what they can withstand. The minutes that we have more high fire danger days or the more the temperature increases, for example, like four degrees, we know our transmission lines cannot withstand that. So for us, it makes sense to, it, it made sense to actually plan for that worst case scenario. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So that's, that's from the impact side. Yeah. And um, it has taken a while to move from understanding our vulnerability and basically accepting this information into the business. And again, not data, information into the business. And <clears throat> a business as, um, as large as ours, it needed us to understand what are the insurance systems that we've put in place um, to basically, if there's a disaster, what do we normally do as a business? So we had to understand that from a climate change perspective, the business has always known when there's a disaster, what do they do? What are the systems that they've put in place? It's part of our risk and resilience system that in place. However, we're adding another layer now in terms from a risk perspective. We're saying the risk that you have been planning for or that you've insured for, we see it worsening now. So it means more disasters or temperature. And sometimes it's not a, a disaster. I must stress that. Uh, most of the time we've always looked at climate change as presenting an increase in the number of disasters. Actually, there's a, the, there's a shift in our seasons. There's a shift in, you know, the two degrees, that two degrees, three degrees that we're experiencing this summer that we didn't have last summer. 
it's a shift in our system. It's a, it's a shift in terms of impact from an efficiency, from the number of high fire danger days, from a number of heat wave days. So you would also pick up that our weather variables, we moved from just explaining them as rainfall, increased rainfall, increase, you know, increase uh, temperature. We had to define our own weather variables, which is where we've also struggled sharing our, our information. It's, 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 and I think what I want to stress here, it's how different businesses uh, would utilize weather variables and climate variables according to what works for them. For us, that has worked for us. We've had to look at each weather variable, rainfall, and said, how do we define rainfall for us? Is it a number of, um, of days we receive rainfall? Is it the amount of rainfall that we receive? And that amount of rainfall we receive, what is the threshold? How much of it can we actually withstand? In terms of our infrastructure systems and all of that. So we've also spent a lot of time understanding weather, simple thing like weather. What is it that we've designed for?